industry and 90% of life is listening. And in fact, as people discover how to listen deeply, what you inevitably get to learn, like Reverend Chris Michael suggested, is that very few people need our advice or instruction or guidance. And in fact, that what most people seem to need, actually, if there's such a thing, is to be witnessed, listened to. Especially if our first principle of science of mind is true, that the infinite intelligence of the all mind is everywhere present at the same time in all people. So then why am I trying to describe to infinite wisdom what he or she or it must do? I just understand it's working out something in you right there. Witness it. What a privilege. You know, in the beginning of my ministry, when I became a minister, I, I always thought I had to say something wise until I started to get a feeling of what it was like for, you know, when people gave me advice. And I, and I noticed that sometimes when I was stressed out and I just wanted to share my burden, that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to be witness. And I noticed I didn't really like it when I was stressed out and I was expressing my frustration. And some well-meaning metaphysician would say something like, well, why don't you change your mind? Or what hidden belief is operating you? Or, you know, I know that. Just hear me. Don't start agreeing with me that I'm crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, when the church was a little smaller, I had the privilege of being able to sit with people in one-on-one -on -one counseling. And um, I discovered very quickly that the less I said, the wiser I was thought to be. <laughs> yeah. And then as the church grew in size and the need for one-on-one -on -one counseling grew beyond my personal capacity to take care of it, we started to develop practitioners who are, are, are counselors, spiritual counselors are trained to listen like that and do that kind of work for us. And if you're fairly new here, I just wanted to introduce to you the two ways that our practitioners, our spiritual counselors, function in this community. Because on, on one hand, they are volunteers to the community. They pray with us. They pray in the chapel after service. And, and what you can do is you can go into the chapel and for five minutes, you just say what's on your mind briefly. And then they pray with you for whatever's going on your mind. And then you get to experience someone totally listening to you. It's a tremendous gift to give to yourself. It's free. And then sometimes you notice you need more than five minutes. You know, so that's the other track that they operate on. They offer themselves for a fee-for-service basis where you can go and contract with them to counsel and they'll sit with you an hour, an hour or a half and then they will totally take you in and listen to you completely in what you have to say. You have the experience once again of being totally listened to. Sometimes people have expressed to me that they're kind of challenged with this idea of having to pay for spiritual counseling. Well, I find that curious because I don't get any of my counseling for free anywhere. I'm happy to pay professionals to listen to me. And I do. And aren't you glad I go somewhere to process... <laughs> A deep freak before I show up here, you know. <laughs> oh, and I pay. Yeah. And you know, most practitioners will offer some kind of sliding scale for people who are economically challenged or they've got some service agreement with the church. There are ways to work it out. But I mention that because I notice something about my own attitude towards things are free. Because somehow when I pay for a thing, like the little girl in the comic strip, then I listen with my eyes and my ears and my whole body. You know, now it's important. I, I hired an attorney once just for a telephone consultation, a half hour of asking an important question, $500. High level question, I guess. <laughs> but boy, did I listen to everything. <laughs> I, not only did I listen, I wrote it down. I took notes and I took action. And afterwards I realized that many people around me had been telling me exactly what she said for free. But it wasn't until I paid $500 that I understood it. 
Do you know what I'm talking about? I, it's just an observation that might not apply to you. People ask me, how do you choose a practitioner? Well, same way you choose a dentist, a counselor, massage therapist, you try them out. You can try them out after service in the Grinton Chapel. We highlight one every week on the back of the announcement page with testimonials, rates, phone numbers, connections. We have their pictures all up in, outside the, the Grinton Chapel. You can call them up, discuss what you can expect, rates, times, and whether it'll work for you. You know, it's at the other end of it is when you give that gift to yourself of that kind of time it's one of the ways of developing you the awareness of a compassionate heart by giving yourself the compassion first and to experience being listened to that attentively it's life changing I don't know how um, I don't know how folk do without it you know, I can't depend on friends and family for that they're too close they're just too close. Yeah. I've been thinking about my own training as a practitioner because all ministers have to be practitioners first. And when I first learned how to listen and you know what to do, I was still real nervous in my first sessions with people. I'd sit there and I would I'd listen and I couldn't say anything because I didn't know what to say. And then people would write me and say how very much I'd help them. <laughs> You know, when all I had done was just sit there and pay attention attentively, encouragingly, and pray afterwards, and I didn't realize I was doing exactly what life wanted me to do. Shut up. <laughs> Listen. And so, you know, I learned something. I learned something that I used in my sessions to get myself out of the way. And you know, you, you can use this on your friends. I just used it on a friend last night. Start like this. I say, you know what? Start at the beginning. Tell me everything. Don't leave anything out. Take as much time as you like. And you know, it never takes them as long as they think. And what an invitation to just be there. And I noticed something. I noticed that sometimes I had to really choose to be present for the listening. Because you know, not everything that's going on in everybody's life is interesting to all of us. It's just how it is. So when I made that invitation, now I'm going to follow up and I'll be present to listen to it. Oh, I don't have to agree. I don't even have to identify. I don't even have to approve. I don't even have to know how to fix it up. I don't have to give myself over to that. I just have to witness. And then in that witnessing, I started to notice the immense diversity of life in people. How one person feels a thing this way and the other person feels it that way and one person's experience teaches them that and the other person that. And then out of that magnificence of diversity, the, the next key to developing a compassionate heart, not only don't fix it, but leave it alone. Let it be. It just is the way it is. People experience and express affection in different ways. What makes you feel cared for? Is it quality time someone spends with you? Or is it a warm hug from a friend? For some, caring comes through a thoughtful card or, or when someone does a thoughtful service for them, like taking out the garbage. Still, others need to hear caring expressed in words while others feel it is best when their privacy is respected. Curiously, the way one person experiences affection is not necessarily the same for others. Even close family members and partners and loved ones can have dissimilar modes of caring. You may love a hug, whereas it may do very little for your sibling. But how would you know if you don't listen? How would you know if you're trying to busy fix their way of experiencing caring? How would you know if you're just trying to busy live their life? Letting it be. You know, it's a beautiful and wonderful realization when a spiritual student like we are realizes 